time for some winter plant chores both inside with my houseplants and outside in our greenhouse getting it ready for the frosty weather hey welcome back or welcome if you're new i'm rose she her i am still sick so i sound a little bit weird but it's time to do some winter plant chores so grab a drink or your own list of plant chores and let's get started now i don't actually often film plant chores videos because i think i don't enjoy watching them myself but from what i understand you guys do enjoy watching them so we're gonna do it welcome to our garden as you can see it is getting quite cold there's some hail here we put the bananas in wrap to protect them we're gonna make the greenhouse winterproof soon but first we're gonna get some rainwater wow the seagulls are very loud today welcome to living close to the sea I should probably clean this watering can, but not right now. Mm. While I'm carrying this heavy thing inside, let me know if you enjoy watching plant chores videos in the comments, because I'm quite curious. Since it's really cold outside, I always put my rainwater in front of the heaters for a little bit to warm it up before I water my plants. I don't want their roots to feel the freezing cold water. <laughs> This one was already warmed up from being inside for a couple of days, so that's perfect. We can get started with watering the plants. I got a lot of questions on social media about winter care. And for me, the most important thing with winter watering is that I measure. So I use this measuring sticky thing, stick it in to see if the plant is still wet, because it can be a little bit tricky, especially with big pots like this. This is Thais, my Thai constellation. It can feel dry at the top, but then when you stick this thing in to more the bottom, Okay, this is actually dry, so it needs water. This is at two. I try to water once it gets below three, so like in the red of this thing. Generally, of course, the ferns, I want to stay a little bit more moist. Are you still fertilizing right now? It is beginning of December. One thing people often say is that you don't fertilize in fall and winter, but another thing people say is you only fertilize when your plants are actively growing, and some of my plants are definitely actively growing but I can't have two, should I have two containers? One with fertilizer and one without? Wow, this is a rambling video. Sorry, I haven't talked to anyone in a long time because I've been sick for a whole week. <laughs> so hi, it's nice to chat to you. I think we're gonna go without. Let's get started. So my Thai constellation, he is so beautiful. There's some browning on this part because I have large sectoral white patches on it. Cream patches, however you want to call them. Oh, sorry. I'm also going to remove the fungus gnat thingies because they've been in there a while. And the baggies that you see here, I often get questions about these as well. These are good bugs that I use to treat any bad bugs. These are Spicol are against uh, spider mites and Swirsky are mostly against thrips. But these ones, you can see the weak number on them. These are old. So I'm going to take out all the old baggies and they last four to six weeks. I normally water the plants wherever they live, but for this video, I moved them so you can see them better. As you can see, Ferry is doing really well. This is the big monstera that I cut up. And some of the cuttings were so slow, but it's finally putting out one leaf here. And this was the other really slow cutting. And look what it grew recently. So they're finally all started. This was the mother plant. It's growing much faster. It was already rooted very well. And this was the top cutting that is now also rooting nicely in the pole and has grown one leaf. He is in a self-watering pot, but I don't use this because it just is way too wet for a monstera. He's at around five, so he doesn't need water. This Hoya Curtisi is super long, but in a very, very small pot. Somehow it is thriving, so I just water it and leave it alone. Removing more expired baggies of good bugs. Ow! This is Luna, my half moon monstera, which is generally not a thing, but in this case it is. I propagated her and sold cuttings a few months ago. We do see a lot of mealybugs on there. This is a thing in my house now, mealybugs suck. But I wanted to show you the roots because this was my top cutting with not a lot of roots yet. Look at her now. Wow, so fuzzy. Hey, Maxer. As you can maybe tell, I give a lot of water and then I pour it out again and I use that for the next plant usually. 
especially in this case, because there's so many roots underneath, I want them to get a nice drink before I pour it back out. So I'm gonna let this sit while we treat the mealybugs. This is how it always goes. It starts with a few chores like watering the plants, then I find mealybugs, then I notice that my mealybug pens are empty, so we're gonna fill these. If you don't know, these are just aquarelle water paint pens with a little water compartment at the end that instead of water, we fill with alcohol. You can also use peroxide and my friend Anse uses spiritus, which I don't know the English name for, but I'm filling this up with 99% isopropanol and that will be very easy to treat the mealybugs. This is always a little bit messy, so I like to use little plant pots to catch the leftover alcohol. I've actually taken part of the paint of my table off with previous attempts, so I'm extra, extra careful now. Since there are a lot of mealybugs and big patches on this, I can use the leftover alcohol on toilet paper to just wipe. And this also works really well for the sticky residue that they leave behind. I kind of want that off because that really attracts cat hairs and dust and my house is pretty dusty in general. I'll probably show you how to use these on the next plant because <laughs> I have a lot of mealybugs. You squeeze a little bit and then you can put the alcohol on with the pencil tip. Oh, this feels very dry. Ooh, hello roots. This, by the way, is my yellow variegated syngonium that I named Katya. As you can see, I chopped the top off because it just all became fully yellow. And hopefully this new growth point is gonna be half, half again like it was before. I do have three plants in the pot now and I just noticed that this new leaf looks pretty nice. And this one seems to also have a leaf with a bit more green in it. This one is fully green. This one is fully yellow. This is not sustainable variegation. This leaf is gonna die and just the green leaves are gonna survive. So I hope we can get some nice variegation again like this. With chores, I never know what's gonna come up. So I hope you're still with me. <laughs> some may say that it's not very smart to reuse water like this. And that is true. If you have some kind of bug in the soil, it will spread to all of your plants. I use good bugs, so I'm not so worried about bugs. And also I wanna use my rainwater wisely, even though we have a lot of it. <laughs> I think it's fine. <laughs> By the way, how stunning are these blue pots? They're made from recycled plastic out of the ocean by Elho. This one definitely deserves a close up. These are the three wet sticks that I took from Ferry, my big variegated monstera. As you can see, it's been growing quite well, but the leaves are still quite small, even though they're getting fenestrations. This is the latest one on this one. And then here, both of them are now growing another leaf. So that's really cool to see. Maybe I should start giving these a support. I think I'm gonna wait until spring though. I'm not saying you can't repot in winter, but my house in general is very cold and uncomfortable for the plants. So I don't wanna give them any unnecessary stress. I'm just gonna leave these growing as they are until it gets a little bit warmer, like in March, maybe April, and then I'll repot these or maybe I will sell them. I don't know how many of Ferry I actually need. I have four that are actively growing now. Maybe I can make someone else happy with these in spring. Okay, continuing, there's lots more to do. This is another one of those pots from the Ocean Collection. Ah, I love them. These are actually the cuttings from the plant sale that I did in fall. And I kept these because they were so white looking that I wanted to make sure I was selling healthy, happy plants to people and not plants that were gonna die real quick from just being too white. But look, it grew, this one grew this new leaf, which is perfectly happy and fine. This plant is gonna be fine. And this one grew another pretty white leaf. So this, it's good that it's still in my care, but I'm not worried, it's not fully white. It does look amazing already. It has three fenestrations, woo! This Hoya Gunungading is so adorable. It does have quite a few mealybugs. You can maybe see them there, so we're gonna treat. But it's also looking like it's budding up for the first time. Let me zoom in. Can you see that? So we definitely have to rescue this from the mealybugs. So I'm just gonna squeeze until some alcohol drips out and drip it on the mealybugs. You can see them changing color right away. That's it. <coughs> Everything is sticky. Here's a nice example of what the stickiness of mealybugs can look like. It looks just like water drips here as well, but when you wipe it, you will see even the tissue sticks to it a little bit. It's so sticky and gross. 
so it takes a bit of rubbing. And I can actually feel from the softness of some of these leaves that it can use a good bit of water. Yeah, very dry. And with Hoya, the watering often goes straight through because the soil is very chunky. So that's why I pour a little bit more in, I let it soak for a little bit, and then I pour the water out so that I'm sure that the roots could have taken up some of the water. It seems like there's always more mealybugs to be found. And so much stickiness everywhere. Did you know that mealybugs can also hide on things like this? They don't need to be on plant material. So they are even in my grow lights in some places. Ugh. Checking the baggies on this long, beautiful pot with gloriosums and watering it. And of course, pouring in some of the leftover water from the Hoya. Well, I checked this last pot. By the way, if you want to see these plants more up close, these are all my philodendron. I just put out a video with all of my philodendron in one video. Oh, and by the way, this one has a flower that's open which I think is pretty cool. These long pots are <laughs> very handy for crawlers, but it's also a little bit tricky because here on this side, it's very dry right now. And on this side, it's not so dry. So it's a little bit more tricky to water. In general, I have a very, very chunky mix in here and I know it dries very quickly. So I'm not too worried about watering these. They also have some mealy bugs. And if you don't know, they can often hide in the leaf creases here. I currently don't have any to show you. I already killed them, but I go around like painting shapes of the leaves because that's where they are hiding. I am now out of warm water. So let's see if the other one has warmed up a little bit already. Oh, no, still very cold. What I sometimes do is pour some boiling water in there to make it a little bit warmer. Hello. Maggie wanted to say hi. While we wait for the water to boil, I was checking on my Hoya and I just wanted to show you, you have to be careful with treating mealybugs if you also use good bugs. Cause this little guy is a good bug. It is a little bit bigger than a mealybug and it eats mealybugs for breakfast and lunch and dinner. Thank you for your service. Oh, and here's another one. These are very active. Look at them go, I'm looking for mealybugs to eat. Good job, buddy. Oh, and in the big terrarium, I can show you what they look like when they are mature, like little ladybugs, but different colors. I think they are from Australia originally, Kryptos. And these guys also eat a lot of mealybugs. While we're on the topic of mealybugs, this is one of my Linearis cuttings, sorry for the flickering light, that has struggled a lot. Literally, it is stiff with the, like there's literally uh, stuff everywhere from the mealybugs. There's so many of them, but it is flowering and it is still flowering. It's been open since like the middle of November and it's now, I think the 10th of December or something. So it's been open for so long. I was actually gonna throw this away like weeks ago, but then I saw the flower buds and I didn't wanna throw that away. Uh, and it's still growing. This poor thing is really working hard, but they are everywhere. It's so sticky. Blech. Okay, the water is at 80 degrees. So we're gonna pour that in. Give it a little mix. Still very cold, okay. Let's just forget about the watering for now and do some other chores. If you don't know, I live in a very old, very adorable house. It is an old fisherman's house, but some of the windows are still single pane glass, which sucks. And it gets very cold, especially here in the bathroom. We actually are gonna build a new bathroom. It's gonna be fully warm. And I'm already planning all the plants I'm gonna put in here. We're gonna create more windows. It's gonna be really cool. But that is in spring. For now, we're focusing on this. Last winter already, we put an extra layer of plastic in front to insulate it better, but that had opened in some places and then water came back through. So we have to fix this. Literally in winter, I have ice piling up here, which is not ideal for plants in front of it. First, let's clear out this mess. It's nine degrees Celsius here right now. So that's not very warm. With some of the other windows, we were able to just close it up again. With this one, I don't think that's possible because I need to clear out all this gunk down here. I think it just all, oh, that wasn't very hard. I think it all needs to go. Oh, this is satisfying.
Oh, sorry, spider. Mm. Anyway, what I tried to show you was that there is a lot of water here. And once we put the plastic back up, that should be better. fun noise. I try to get it as dry as possible because this is a sticky tape that we're going to stick on and that's what the plastic is going to stick on to. Now the hardest part to put the plastic on and last time we actually did this together and my boyfriend is not home right now. He went back to work today after being sick like me for a week so I'm gonna try. I was quite scared to do this by myself because the last time it was pretty tricky but thankfully it went really well. I'm quite impressed with my own skills. <laughs> Okay, a little bit annoying. The last step is to use a hair dryer on this to warm up the plastic and then it becomes super smooth and straight. But I can't find our hair dryer. My boyfriend uses it in the shed somewhere and he's not home. I have no idea where it is. So this also will have to wait. Now, of course, I have ADHD. This is my life in general, starting a lot of projects and not finishing many of them. But it's extra frustrating when it's not my own fault. As soon as I sat down on the sofa to have my lunch, Maggie came to join me and she is now a lap cat, lap cat, lap cat. So I'm going with it. I'm taking a little break. <laughs> Reminder, it's important to take breaks and you're allowed to take breaks. Even if you don't have a brain injury like me. <coughs> my boyfriend came home from work and that me and Maggie left my lap, unfortunately, but also that we now have the hairdryer. So it's time to finish one project. <laughs> You can't hardly see it. We have to finish the edges. But now we have an extra layer to protect us from the cold. One great thing about living close to the beach is that we can go for a little walk, check out the ocean in the middle of filming a plant vlog. It is sunny today. My boyfriend is home early. We have weekend vibes. Had a hot chocolate with my boyfriend and his mom in a restaurant with a lot of plants. We made it home. One of the things that makes plants struggle, especially in my house, but in general in winter, is coldness. One thing I've done is install a few heat mats. One of them is underneath here to keep my begonia warm, especially because upstairs it gets very cold in winter, so there's hardly any plants here. Up here with my prop boxes, there are a few more heat mats. One under here and one under that box. And the other one is lack of light. So I like to work with heat mats and grow lights, like the one behind me, to make sure that my plants stay warm enough and get enough light for making it through winter. I also migrate a lot of my plants closer to the window. It's like a whole migration in summer, plants are on that side of the room. And then when winter comes, I move all the plants more closer to the window so that they continue thriving hopefully. So far the terrariums are still warm enough luckily. I have a heating element in this big one. Normally in winter I put a heat mat in the small one. I haven't done that yet this year. I'm organizing one more giveaway on Instagram so we're gonna take some cuttings for that. It's gonna be Hoya mostly and I've already selected a few very cool plants for it but we're gonna add some more. I cut this one already yesterday. Very very cute Hoya Hushkiliana variegata for the giveaway. I have this one, which is on the kabouse. I'm gonna see if I can cut my Lida bouse, but that is still quite a small plant for me. And I also have this Hoya Nicholsonia New Guinea Ghost. This was my mother plant. I took some cuttings off it. These are my cuttings. They're growing really well, so I'm not worried about that. I see that it has several new growth points, so it's going to go really well. A lot of people said they would love to win a Hoya Gunungating cutting, and I was thinking I can't cut it because here at the end, well, I have another peduncle and no leaves for a long time, so that means it, I can't cut it or I have to cut the whole thing. 
but I noticed that here is actually the perfect bit. Two leaves and a bit of stem that I can cut, so we're gonna do that. Another highly requested one is the pot of gold latifolia, which are all still cuttings that are not growing except for this one. And of course I can't cut that because it's all brand new leaves. But I noticed there is a piece here that I can cut. It will have a bit of a short stem, but it will be possible. Ooh, I think this is gonna be quite a cool prize. Psst. I decided to wait with this Hoya giveaway so that you can also join since you've seen me take the cuttings and everything. If you are in the EU, European Union and interested, head over to my Instagram. It will be in my stories very soon after you watch this. Thanks. Unfortunately, it's getting super dark now, so I can't really film anymore. I'm gonna continue watering and then I'll be back tomorrow. The next morning. Good morning. I am back. Today I have one big task and that has to do with the big terrarium, but I currently can't because my boyfriend has taken over the kitchen with his surfboard projects. If you don't know, he builds his own surfboards and my surfboard. Really, really cool. He has a YouTube channel as well. You can check it out, G-Foils. <laughs> so for now, I'm gonna start editing this video and then once he's done, I'm gonna take over the kitchen and start my terrarium project. Did I show you yesterday which cuttings I selected for the giveaway? We have the New Guinea Ghost, Heschkiliana Variegata, a Pot of Gold, Gunung Gading, Gunung Gading, and Annika Buis. I might add a few more. Many unbearable hours later. That's sarcastic. I actually really enjoy editing. Okay, I've actually been editing for hours and I noticed that it was already one hour of footage. So there is already a lot in this video. I hope you're still watching because it's a long one. But I guess for tourist videos that kind of works out because we're doing tours together. Or maybe you're just chilling and watching and that's also great and okay. The next one is to change this fan. If you don't know, this is my huge terrarium. I love it so much. But since I changed some of the setup, I closed the top up the front windows have started to condense, condensate like this. And I want to change the angle of the fan so that it's gonna blow the windows clean. That's my plan. This is what it's currently hanging on. So I have to undo this, but I'll need both hands. Yeah, okay. It's loose, now we can hang it with a little bit of rope. Okay, check this out. Much better, it's a little bit lower, so I can rotate the air better, and aiming straight at my doors. Yee-hee! Last step is to close the gap off with tape again. That's how I closed it off in the first place anyway. Yes. I've had the door open for a bit, so let's spray to make sure the humidity stays up in there. I use this very luxurious machine. That means I don't have to do the pumping, you know, and then spraying, I can just switch it on. And start spraying, ah! really enjoy the dripping noises, the silence after all the noise from the machine, and especially also the smell after I've sprayed in there. It really smells very earthy. <laughs> Over in one of my small terrariums. I feel bad, but this guy, this Gigas, by the way, it has new markings, so there must be some kind of pest in there, I think. I changed my mind. I think it's because it was touching the top of the glass, and the glass is cold because my house is cold. Fingers crossed that is the case. It's now growing against the top, and it's trying to root back into the wall, but we don't want that because I have to take it out. I think I just have to take it out now before this roots fully in the wall. I'm just gonna try and rip it out. I don't know. This is why I can't do chores because I do things without thinking about them first. Carefully trying to pull on the roots, see if it can get some roots out there. Oh, I broke the stem, I think. 
and then it's rooted into the moss wall as well really badly really good but really bad come on buddy you can't see anything you can just hear the roots snapping this is not my ideal way to do this but we're gonna get you a moss pole okay come on we'll get you a really good moss pole good boy Okay, thank you guys. Without you, I would not have done this. My boyfriend just got home from surfing, so you might hear the shower going. But people often ask me how I make my moss poles, and I don't actually make them, I buy them. And you just get these things, it's a flat pack. You put some moss in, and then it's a moss pole. It's awesome, highly recommend. You can also extend these. Let's do it together, because Gigas definitely needs one. See, another unexpected project that I was not planning to do at all right now. Putting them together is very simple. This is how I like to do it. I close one side off first, squeeze in all the moss and then close the other side. I found this to be the easiest way. Ta-da! Now we're potting up Mr. Gigas and then I guess it's time to stop again because it's already super dark once again. Here we are. Unfortunately, with pulling out the plant, I did break the stem. So now we have a little base cutting and there were some roots on the stem that I tried to pot in the soil a little bit more. I am going to put this in a plastic baggie for now for the markings on that leaf. It might be cold damage or it might be bugs. So I'm going to keep it in a plastic baggie for the humidity and to isolate just to be sure. The next morning. Good morning. It's now day three. This was supposed to be an easy, quick video, but instead we are three days in doing all the chores that need to be done. And today's chores are actually the greenhouse ones because my boyfriend is here to help me. In the greenhouse, we're going to put bubble plastic all over the ceiling and cover the windows to make sure the plants survive the cold season. And if you're wondering what is on my face, I hit my head this morning. So there's some cream calendula plant medicine. Because we had already moved the plants inside the greenhouse for winter, it was a bit of a job because they were all blocking our way. Ah, oh, a little hard for you. But we managed to use tape to stick the bubble plastic to the front of the greenhouse first. And then we had to move all the plants again to get to the ceiling part of it. We used pegs and a washing line that's on either side to hang these from one side to the other. As you can see, I'm mostly standing around a lot while my boyfriend does the pegging. My job was to be the helping hand to cut the pieces, to make sure that they were aligned and all that good stuff but it basically was a lot of looking at him do the work. Check out this beautiful drawing that someone made for me. I made myself useful by sweeping and singing along to the tunes that we had going and then starting to do a little dance and annoying my boyfriend by punching him in the butt. <laughs> Won't you please, please help. Let's see if that gets me any copyright issues, <laughs> but I wanted to share with you. Having a partner with ADHD is not easy. Here I decided to just start do dancing around because we were almost finished and my boyfriend was doing all the work anyway. It was a very cute song, but this is another cute song that's copyright free. And then we were done. My boyfriend vacuum <laughs> cleaned the greenhouse. It might not look as cute, but it is definitely going to help the plant survive. Yay! Finally, all the chores are done. We got ourselves some hot chocolate, plant-based actually, the biggest brand in Holland for hot chocolate now released a plant-based version, so yummy. I hope you got a lot done as well and you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. <laughs> Maybe consider joining my Patreon or my YouTube membership. Either way, I have some very cool things planned for the next few weeks. I think this month I'm gonna post a few extra videos for Vlogmas, Plantmas. Maybe switch on the bell so that you get notified. It won't just be on Wednesdays. So I hope to see you there. Thanks so much, friends. Bye. Ah, it's hot.